Welcome to C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph. Today's question is, what is the difference between solipsism and idealism? Which is a great question. This is probably what most would consider a red pill question. And uh, while I'm not, I don't consider myself a red pill content creator, I do discuss red pill topics often. And uh, even though solipsism versus idealism is not exactly a red pill topic, but it is mostly discussed in red pill circles. So I guess that's why it has the reputation of being a red pill topic. So let's actually dive in and figure it out. So idealism is inherently masculine, whereas solipsism is inherently feminine, basically. Solipsism means a person is inherently entitled, whereas idealism means a person is inherently giving and self-sacrificing. Idealism means tribe above self, and solipsism means self above tribe, basically. And this is why humanity has rites of passage. For men, the rite of passage is to basically teach them the learned behavior. It is their nature to put tribe above self from the time they're born until they have this rite of passage. And then their nurture teaches them teaches men to be more self above tribe, basically. And we'll explain why in a second. With women, it's the opposite. They are born with tribe or with uh, self above tribe, basically. They're born with that, which basically means they're more entitled than men are by default, naturally. But then they have their rite of passage and they learn the learned behavior of how to be more tribe above self which enables their, which gives them the ability to submit to a man as well as be a mother of children. A woman throughout her life, regardless of whether or not she likes it or not, is always in some capacity, especially traditionally speaking, submitting to a man. The first man she submits, and throughout her life, she is submitting to at least, at least three men on a regular basis. And that is her father, her husband, and either her son or her son-in-law, the man who basically commits to taking care of her, 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 taking care of her in her old age. That is basically the three men that she ends up submitting to. And then also when women are mothers, they end up submitting to the needs of their children. Their baby will keep crying and she has to submit to the crying baby in order to meet the needs of the crying baby. And that's why a complete woman, if she is self above tribe, She's not going to be able to be a mother unless she has, uh, unless she has a tribe above self, putting the child above herself, basically. This is why men do not commit to women who have not learned tribe above self. Because to a man, if a woman cannot submit to a man, then she cannot submit to the needs of her child, right? That's a fact. So this ends up becoming the dance between the masculine and the feminine. Uh, someone, his name is David Data, tried to make an attempt at explaining this phenomenon through his book, The Way of the Superior Man, and his subsequent work, Dear Lover. Uh, I actually have some huge problems with some of his work, and I think that while he is correct with what he says, there's either some missing context or his work is a little bit incomplete and a bit biased towards his INFJ perspective because he is an INFJ. So based on that, I would recommend making an adjustment. Uh, and that adjustment is understanding the difference between idealism and solipsism, okay? So what are the rites of passage? The rites of passage, like from the male perspective, an example that I've always given is from uh, the movie, The Emerald Forest. Uh, a family has a, a two-year-old, the two-year-old gets lost in the Amazon. The two-year-old is recovered by an Amazon tribe, raised by the tribe. He starts getting into his teen years. He becomes sexually attracted to a girl. The village elders notice. They plan a raid on the village. They go outside of the village, dress up as if they are from a different village and they raid the village at night. They take the boy and at like one or two in the morning, they take him to a waterfall five miles away from the village and then throw him over the edge of the waterfall and say, 
you must die, you must die, it's time to die, it's time to die. And they throw him with the waterfall, leave him for dead and go back to the village. Then the following day, the boy makes it back to the village. They throw this huge party. The boy is dead, the boy is dead, the man is alive, the man is alive. Okay, why? Because this rite of passage teaches a valuable lesson to men that at any moment society will sell you downriver. At any moment you will die. And society will make you die. You fight the wars, you have to sacrifice yourself. And what the rite of passage explains to men is that you should not be sacrificing yourself in vain. It should not be done in vain. So it should not be worthless. It has to be a meaningful sacrifice, right? And so the only way for it to make it meaningful is that you as a man have to be willing to put yourself above everybody else. And this is called masculine frame. Iron rule of Tomasi, one frame is everything. Masculine frame is basically you are the sun. You are the star in your solar system, basically. And all of the planets in your solar system orbit you. And your woman is like Venus and she's got to orbit you properly. And the moons around Venus are like your children, basically. But everyone orbits you. Even Jupiter orbits you, the sun. And you don't orbit anybody. Everyone orbits you. And that's the whole point. You don't orbit anyone or anything. And if you start orbiting someone else, well, guess what? Then you are the problem. You have an issue. <laughs> you have lost masculine frame. You're actually behaving feminine. You're not being masculine, basically. You're not being attractive as a man, essentially. So you have to learn self above tribe because a man who has passed his rite of passage and finally figured out through life experience the learned behavior self above tribe that is what makes him attractive to a woman in as much as a woman's capability to submit and put tribe above self makes her attractive to men women if men are just pumping and dumping you you have a submission problem okay literally that's the reason why you're not submissive you have not learned the rite of passage you are way too solipsistic. You need to shed your solipsism, your natural solipsism, and take on nurtural idealism and become more idealistic and focus on tribe above self. And as much as men must shed their idealism and become more solipsistic, okay? But let's examine this at the uh, universal level. You know, uh, I explain in Season 17, Episode 1, The Source of All Cognition, where I basically, in Season 17, prove the existence of God using uh, Jungian analytical psychology as my basis to do so, in as much as Carl Jung did so in his book, um, Ion, A-I-O-N, uh, which is, according to Jordan Peterson, the scariest book he's ever read in his life. But we utilize Ion's first five chapters as the basis uh, for our theory behind the four sides of the mind and four sides dynamics. But uh, the point is, is that I explain that God the Creator has all of, and basically I prove intelligent design in season 17 playlists. You guys can watch it here on YouTube, but I basically show that God the Creator, the intelligence that created us, has all of the cognitive functions, basically. and. You know, he's got expert sensing. So what does expert sensing need? You know, if you're like this omnipotent, omniscient, all-powerful, creative being, you know, you can get pretty lonely because you're alone. So then you create a race, a race of angels, basically. Why? Because you're lonely. And loneliness is a big problem. It is all about extroverted sensing, okay? Extroverted sensing is where loneliness comes from. You feel loneliness through your expert sensing because it's like there's no one around. Well, he creates the angels and the angels stick around, basically. They are loyal to him. They are pre-programmed to stick around. Why? Because he made the angels idealistic. They think about others before they think of themselves. Thus, they think about God, the creator, before they think of themselves and attend to him, basically, because they are idealistic, right? They are an idealistic race and they fulfill his expert sensing function, right? Well, he has an expert intuition function. So eventually he's like, great, I'm not lonely anymore, but I would like to be wanted. I would like to feel desired. I would like to be feel chosen. So he creates humanity. Humanity he made solipsistic. 
Humanity is self above tribe in general. Humanity, we all think of ourselves before we think of others, okay? We all think of ourselves before we think of others, and that is a problem, right? Well, here's the thing. What is the definition of sin nature? You know, the church talks about original sin all the time and how we're inherently bad people, we're bad this, bad that. In reality, the situation is, is that's actually kind of false. Um, the true definition of sin nature is actually solipsism. Self above tribe is sin nature. And you're like, well, wait a minute, Chase, are you saying that the male rite of passage is to actually cause the male to lean into their sin nature? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why? Well, here's the thing. If God the Creator wants to be wanted by his expert intuition function, if he really wants to be wanted, if he wants to be desired, it's not, he's not going to feel truly desired. It's going to be like a fake desire if he's only relying on his angels to desire him because they're already pre-programmed to put him above themselves because they're idealistic. So there wouldn't be much value in the angels choosing God. There would not be any value in them, and that's why they're incapable of fulfilling his expert intuition function, right? So that's where humanity comes in. Humanity is necessary to fulfill it. Why? Because we're solipsistic. Think about it. Women have the power of choice. They're the ones who get to choose whether or not they're going to open up themselves, open their legs to a man to receive him. They choose who they have sex with. They choose who will be the father of their child. They make the choice. Women are the sexual arbiters of the human race, basically. And that's why the majority of our race, we all start off as girls at first and some of us become men and there's more female DNA than there is male DNA in all of humanity. We are a feminine race, even at the genetic level, okay? And so based on that, based on that genetic truth of, the human, of humanity and its origins, basically, that truth, as a result of that truth, it gets closer and closer to a point, a point where the value of the choice Humanity choosing God. So humanity, because we're solipsistic, we worship things. We're constantly looking for something to worship. We're constantly looking for something to put our attention on. That's why God gets mad at humanity for worshiping Baal or worshiping Moloch or false gods or whatever. That's why the first commandment says, thou shalt not have any gods before me, right? And that's basically what a husband is saying to a wife. Thou shalt not have any man above me or any child above me or anything above me. I am the number one priority in your life. And you will burn everything down in your life for me if necessary. You know, that's the whole point. That's why the, uh, the bride leaves her family, leaves her father to join the bridegroom and the two shall become one flesh, basically. That is what that means, right? because she is letting, letting go of everything behind her to be joined with the bridegroom. So, because solipsism. So here's the thing. Solipsism proves, since we are a feminine race and we are solipsistic, proves that we have free will. So everyone like argues, oh, free will isn't really a thing. It really is a thing. Free will is a thing. It's self-evident because humanity is solipsistic. We would have to have free will collectively in as much as a woman has the free will to choose her man or whichever man has the honor of being inside of her basically okay to receive a man she makes that choice so humanity ends up collectively as a feminine race having the choice collectively to choose god or not god the creator or not to fulfill his any function but here's the thing humanity would have to have the free will to do so, which means she has to have solipsism, also known as sin nature. Without sin nature, humanity's choice for God is worthless. It is worthless. Sin nature is required. Solipsism is required. That inborn innate entitlement that in humanity has is required. In order for humanity's choice towards God to fulfill his expert intuition function to have any value whatsoever. And as much as why men 
to be selected by a woman is insanely valuable to men. Very valuable to men. And is very valuable to God, the creator, for the same reason. So folks, that at a macro universal metaphysical level represents you know, things in celestial places, how idealism versus solipsism is playing out, what the value of solipsism actually is. And the thing is, is that the reason why sin nature is basically shat on, you know, from a biblical perspective, from a church perspective, is because we have to be willing to submit, to submit to God the Creator. And that means we have to learn how to become tribe above self. Tribe above self. And humanity is going through its rite of passage right now to learn tribe above self as humanity is qualifying itself for God's love, basically, and his commitment and his protection and his provisioning. You know, all those alpha and beta traits for humanity collectively. That's the point. That's, that's, that is, and that's literally why idealism versus solipsism is so important. Humanity was born solipsistic, but has to learn how to become idealistic. The angels, they were born idealistic, but they are learning to become more solipsistic. In fact, they did, and in fact, it blew out, blew out in their face even, learning how to become more solipsistic because a third of the heavenly host fell under Lucifer, right? That's why. The angels were dealing with learning solipsism, just as humanity right now is dealing with learning idealism, okay? And these are the differences between the two. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.